So we are going to start with Misty Gray 09090 Reaper color. And that's the one we're going to do for the uh, concrete. I'm not going to dilute this at all. I'm just going to slap it on the model as is using my same brush I used for my uh, yellow base coating. And I just want to start out with a nice helping of gray all the way up to the dirt. I don't want to keep trading colors back and forth and come back and cover gray with brown and then come back and put more gray back over the brown and then more brown over the gray. So I just try and get all the uh, the big main areas. I know where I'm not going to interfere with or bump anything. I'll get pretty close. Save myself a little bit of trouble. Not necessarily being detailed about it, but I just kind of want to get to, I want to get some gray paint on here. I want to see something other than just brown. All right, so as you can see, what I did was I just threw some gray paint on. So for example, it's a good spot to look here on this concrete uh, column, pillar, whatever you want to call it. But you see, I stopped just short of where the I want it brown. So there's a little bit of a brown stripe in between my, uh, my gray pillar and the ground. I don't want to go too far and again, just keep trading gray and brown back and forth until I get it right. So. I'll just kind of slop the paint on the areas I'm not worried about and then be a little more careful up close. And then what I'll do is I'll get my thinner brush and I'll go in and just cut right up to the line of where I want it to stop. And I'll have to be a little bit more precise and take more time. This, I, I, there's no reason to take a small brush and paint that. Same thing with all the little spots on here. So you can see where it's kind of ugly around the edges basically, but I'm gonna kind of cut it into the uh, I'm going to kind of cut it into the brown, same thing over here, and I maybe need to touch that a little bit, um, and I'll squeak that in there. It's kind of hard to do with the camera in my face, so I'm either going to have to do it at a different angle or off camera, but just so you have a general idea. So instead of using that big old flat brush, I'll just take something with a finer tip. That one's kind of junky. Here. So I'll just take something that has a little bit of a finer tip. Um, and again, I will get in here and kind of just cut just along the edge there and then back my way up towards the gray since I'm less, less likely to slop things if I'm painting that direction than going this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started doing that.
And so there you go. I uh, may have to go back over it. I've got to see what this is going to look like when it dries. I think some of these spots might be a little thin, so I'm probably going to have to do a second coat of the gray, but you get a general idea. Again, just kind of sloppy at first in the safe spots, and then once you get a little closer, you've got to add some finesse to it. Saves maybe a little bit of time. If I tried to do it with that big brush, it'd be harder to get into some of these little areas without slopping paint everywhere. So. I did the best that I could. I'm sure I missed some spots as I put this down, let it dry, and I come back and look at it again. I'm sure I will find something that I will need to correct or fix. I've already found one spot where I've left some white paint. Um, I don't know if that'll show up on camera, but right here in this little uh, crevice there just above, that's not a gray paint that's been slopped, it's brown, and of course it's in an area that I want to be brown. so. I'm, I'm thinking that when I start washing this and doing the detail work, that'll cover it up, so I'm not going to be too worried about it, but I don't want a big patch of it. So I'm going to let this dry, and then I'll slap another coat of, another coat of paint on it, probably off camera, and I'll start uh, adding some of these other colors to the metal bits and uh, the red to the Space Marine helmet. So I'm not big on the uh, Space Marine factions, but from what I'm to understand, the Blood Angels and uh, Orcs don't exactly get along. So that's the only reason why I chose uh, this color. I'm sure Ultramarines probably would have worked too. Or somebody may be screaming at their screen or in the comments that I got it all wrong. Well, again, like I said, I don't know it. So I know they're red with green eyes, and that's about all I can tell you. All right, so I had to do a little bit of work off camera here simply because it's kind of hard to uh, manipulate this thing with the camera in my face and actually get to all the little small details and you actually be able to see what I'm doing. For example, there's a uh, little brass casing down inside that little mini crater there and it'd be very difficult for me to actually show you me getting in there with the brush and me actually being able to see it and paint it. So we've got the uh, Space Marine helmet painted red with the green eyes. I've got all the concrete chunk sections painted gray. I went and picked out all the little uh, brass casings that are sprinkled on the ground and painted those accordingly. Um, there's also a skull that's kind of hiding in the back here that I didn't even realize was there until I was looking for uh, details to paint. We've got a bunch of little random metal bits poking out that are also painted accordingly. So I know it looks all nice and clean and new. We absolutely do not want it to look like that for the final product. We want this thing to look grungy and gross and like it's been through a uh, nasty battle. So in order to achieve that effect very easily, you guys should be familiar with uh, my washes. If not, I have a video on that and it will teach you most of the things that you need to know about them. So the one that I'm going to start with, I'm just going to cover everything on here with the Seraphim Sepia first and then once that dries, I'm going to move on and do the Agrax Earthshade. So this is uh, the old uh, mud color. So I'm going to do that for this entire thing. This area out here that's not part of the, uh, the model kit base part, um, this is all going to get painted white when that's done. And then I'm going to put my snow over this, and then I'm just going to kind of leave this to uh, tell the tale of the battle. And then I'll like sprinkle in some grass or something along the edges just to break it up and hopefully it'll uh, come out looking nice. So I'm going to go ahead and get started washing this and we'll see how it comes out. There's no, uh, no real technique or finesse when it comes to washing unless you're only trying to get specific areas in this instance since I'm trying to get the whole thing done. Um, we just kind of slap it on there and spread it around. And as you can see, it already kind of makes that metal go from looking nice and new and shiny to kind of rusty. It'll also, uh, if there's any little gaps or areas that I missed something, they'll kind of fill in there. Um, it may not cover up white, so I went around and tried to make sure I got all the white uh, kind of spaces here, especially in the brown. It stands out a lot. Um, but this will just kind of darken everything up and fill in those crevices and give it a little bit more definition.
All right, so there we go. That's the uh, first coat of wash applied. We gotta let it dry and then we'll take a look at it, make sure I didn't miss any areas. I definitely don't want anything on here looking shiny and new. Um, once I'm satisfied with that, we'll move on to the uh, mud color. All right, so our layer of sepia wash has dried. This thing is starting to look a little grungy. I'm liking the way it's turning out so far, but I think it could be a little bit dirtier, so I'm going to go ahead and apply our next coat of wash, and we're going to see how that turns out once it's dry. All right, so now we just gotta let this dry and we'll see how it looks. All right, so this thing is dry and I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I think we're at a point now where we are going to go ahead and start painting the white. Again, it's gonna extend out from the uh, brown raised areas from the piece that got stuck on the base. We're just gonna go all the way out here and then once the white's dry, I'm gonna do a black rim all the way around the edge here and then I think that'll be it for the base and then we can actually get started on the model. So let's go ahead and start throwing some white paint on here. I'm going to be using the Reaper Pure White 09039 for this. So I anticipate it taking a couple coats to get on there, but we'll see what we end up with. So I'm going to kind of use a reverse process of what I did before. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start edging around this first and kind of being a little bit more precise with it. And then I will take my bigger brush afterwards and just come and start dragging paint everywhere. I'm not expecting it to be exactly perfect. Um, the benefit of this is when I'm ready to base the model, I'm going to be putting my snow, my pretend snow. So if I, it'll probably be kind of caked up along this edge here. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm still not going to be super sloppy with it. The less uh, work I have to go back and correct later, the, the better. So I'll take the, uh, the time now to do that properly. All right, so I got the, uh, the area close to the base portion here all trimmed out. Um, I can already tell by looking at it, it's gonna need another coat, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the other portion too so that I can just do all my coats at one time. So I'm gonna uh, switch brushes here and get started on that. All right, so I'm just gonna switch to a little bit chunkier of a brush because again, I don't care. I can just slap the paint on here. All right, so we're just going to let that uh, dry and then we'll go ahead and get the other coats done. I'll probably do that off camera just so I can make sure I get in there and get it all done since, I mean, it's the same thing. I'm just putting white paint on there and then uh, 
We'll get the rim done and then we'll be done with this base so we can actually start painting the real model itself. All right, so now all we have left to do on this guy is to put the black rim on it. Um, for that, I'm going to use the Reaper Pure Black 09037. All right, and so for this, I'm just going to use my wide brush again. I'm just going to kind of pinch the model in case there's any white paint that may still be wet on there. And all I'm going to do is just paint the rim black. All right, so we got maybe a little sloppy on the, the edge there. Um, I'll take a look at it when it's dry, see if I need to put some more black paint on there. Sometimes black can be a little bit of a pain. You'd think because it's so dark that it covers everything super easy, but sometimes it's not so easy. So what we're going to do is we'll let this dry. We'll take a look at it. I don't think it's too bad looking at it from the top. And then again, once we put the uh, snow material on top of it, it should be, uh, should be good to go. So... I think it's looking pretty good. So we'll let it dry and then we'll take a closer look. All right, so from my standpoint, I'm basically done with this base, at least for right now. Um, I thought about doing some edge detailing and highlights on it, but I really don't want to do that till the model's on there because I don't want to spend a lot of time on something like perhaps these ridges right here, and then the model gets plopped on top of it and you don't even see it because his leg and his feet are blocking it. So I may wait until the uh, the entire model is based on here and then I'll kind of look at it and see what kind of uh, highlights or additions I want to make depending on what I want to somebody's eyes to focus on when they're looking at the model so for now as far as painting and washing and all the things are concerned this base is done so that's could probably be the end of this video and then as soon as we start the next one we'll start doing some uh, colors on the model himself so we can get him ready to attach to this thing and be done you know one of these days so thanks for uh, your patience and waiting for these videos to come out. I know it's been taking a while. Life gets a little hectic sometimes. I'm doing my best on top of streaming and getting some time for myself to do the things I need to do. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, comments, likes, subscriptions. Um, keep those coming, and I will do my best to get the content out fast. So thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.